What's up guys, we are River, Corinne and Mila, a full-time travel family from the UK. And this is our in-depth review on the VW California T6.1 Ocean Camper as first-time van lifers. We spent two weeks in this van touring around the NT500 and the Isle of Skye. We drove, cooked, ate, slept and of course brushed our teeth in this van. This is our in-depth review on our two-week experience as VW van lifers. As a disclaimer, we were working with Volkswagen UK on this trip, but we are not being paid to say any of this, and this is our honest review as first time van lifers. Okay, so straight from the off, for me, the best part about this van is the way it drives. It feels exactly like a car, although I can't compare it to any other van, as I haven't driven any other van. It's got a good kick in it, so it's quite punchy, and it feels very, very smooth to drive. We were given an automatic to test, so, it has been a dream really to drive and everything you need to control the vehicle you either have on your steering wheel, you have here on your touch panel or even up here we have a touch screen that controls everything. Okay, I'm going to quickly delve into the ones that we mainly used and most likely as first time van lifers you will probably use as well. So the call box was really important. So this you could turn on and off, you can even set its starting hours and put a timer on it so you can turn on or turn off whenever you need it to. No you'll see a small symbol appear here, like this, when you switch it on. For your heater, it would be the same. You can set the different levels to set it to continuously to heat, or you can heat immediately. And then for your pop-up roof, the engine has to be turned on for you to do this. And it's quite clear and helpful the way it talks you through the steps, so it will double check if there's anything above, if the height is okay for it to be open. And then once you're closing it, it will also come up with a message asking you if the bed has been cleared. So when you close it, the roof is safe to close. A side note for this panel is when you plug into the mains with the electric hookup, a small orange symbol will appear here with a plug. So make sure that is turned on when you do hook up. We found out the hard way. We've just spent the best part of an hour trying to figure out if our camper van is electric hook up, hooked up and if how to turn the gas on so basically obviously we use the cable to connect the electricity fine but there's like a little symbol that should come up on the dashboard which we didn't know and didn't have so luckily there's a couple in their camper van that's the same as this so we just asked and eventually he thought of the fuse box in the back in in the boot which we will show you so do ensure that the switch is turned on when you're plugging into the mains both these pilot seats swivel that create extra space for you when you're parked up at night. We only swiveled around the passenger seat as that was the only seat we needed to. The driver's seat we used to use as extra space for Mila's car seat just to store at night. Over here you have the kitchen which is really simple, you just pop up these two lids. And under one you have two gas rings and under the other one is your little sink. Like River said, from the pan control panel you can see how much water you have. Obviously it's only cold water and if you do wash up in the van we would just use, like fill up a pan, boil it and use it for washing up. Under here you have some storage. So if you slide that all the way back you can pull out your cutlery drawer and then two shelving units. And we did use all of this area to store food. Again, this side you've got even more storage for food or whatever. We actually didn't have that much food. So this side was enough for us. And we used most of this side for Mila's clothes as her kind of little wardrobe. And then within this cupboard, you have a gas on and off above. And down here is the valve so that the wastewater can escape. And then again, in this last bit, is a little pop-up for a fridge freezer. And it's quite deep, you can see all the way down here. Even if you're going for a week, I think you'd have more than enough storage. So the van comes with two tables, one in the van and one that you can actually have outside. So this one, you just push your finger in, there's a little lever that slides it out to where you need it to be, lift it up and underneath is a leg that again, just folds out and clips down. And this still moves as well, so if you need to get round to the seat that you've swiveled round or you need to pull it closer to you, then it's great, it has that flexibility. We would use this for like chopping up meals, preparing meals, putting food out, and also lay like the dish cloth on it after I'd done washing up. River would use it for like a work desk as well. And it was just really handy to have that you can literally pop it out in two seconds and it slides away to nothing. So the other table I mentioned is found in the door and you just unhook it with the lever here 
and it just moves out. It's got legs again that fold out behind and then you just store it in here and it's great for sitting outside. There's actually also two chairs that are stored in the boot which we'll show you when we get around there. So great to sit outside and have little picnics. And then underneath the seat is this handy box with all your kind of electrical water extras. So yeah, you have your hose here for getting in fresh water. A lot of the campsites that you'll go to will already have a hose, but if you need one, you have one. Um, electrical cable, again, for when you're hooking up. Um, you've got two level blocks in here um, and a fire blanket and an emergency kit. There is also a dustpan and brush in here, which I'm laughing because me and River said so many times during the trip, oh, we wish we had brought a dustpan and brush with us because it does kind of get filthy in here. We're just going in and out of the van. Did not realize that we had one in here and we were in this box every day. So there you go. So here we have a bit more of like a wardrobe space. So it opens this way and also this pushes all the way back if you needed it to and um, there is like a wire here that you could put some hangers on and then this is really great every day I would use it to do my makeup we'd also store like our toothbrushes in here and anything that you kind of want just standing up and easy access to it's really quite deep in here so we managed to fit all of my clothes most of our like jackets we would put in there as well on the top my makeup wash bags some of Mila's toys and then finally there is an extra bit of storage that's hidden up here you just click the handle and pull it down it is a little bit stiff but in here you could st we actually stored like a pillow up here and we also had some coats up here just trying to maximize the space that you've got so this was one of our pain points every night you have to get this bed out which isn't a problem but the way this bed runs along these rails and the force that you have to get the bed out is not enjoyable to do every night. I feel like this section should be a lot more seamless and smooth for you to get the bed out. So you'd have to pull this lever up and then in an ideal world, I wish that the bed would just slide forward, but it doesn't. You really have to use some force. By the way, we've tried every position. You can try sitting on it, you can try standing up, but the easiest way I found was to hold it with my left hand and pull from the back. And then it moves forward. Once you've pulled the bed forward, we have to put the headrest down. And they fold backwards. And then right here is a lever that you pull on. Once the bed's folded down, you have to pull your mattress over. And although the mattress is pretty thin, it's pretty comfortable to sleep on. The great thing about this bed is if you want to work in bed or if you want to watch a film or anything, you can adjust the backboard. So putting the bed back again, you have to do the same process, but just reverse it. And this now, pulling the bed forward, is where we would always, always struggle. As you can see, it's not easy. Right now I'm smiling, but at the time. <laughs> and I think another thing which would have been great is these handles or like you need some kind of grip to hold and move it. There's nothing really to hold and for you to pull the bed forward. Yeah. So doing this every day, every morning and every night, along with having Mila, along with being in a confined space, Definitely cause some tension. <laughs> Definitely cause some tension. We're going to show you the pop-up ceiling now, which turns into a bed, but also you can lift up this ceiling and gives you enough space to stand up. Although we encountered a problem when we'd done this and we wasn't able to lift the roof up, but we will tell you about that now. Okay, once the roof is up, we then open the panel, which slides back. We actually had an accident with the bed. So we had this bed pushed all the way up and we were standing up for the first couple of nights. But I had accidentally left a wash bag at the back while it was up. And as Corin has pulled the bed down, we've broken the hinge. I think that has been a cause of extra stress as well, just because of the space. So having that extra room would really really help during a trip so i'll quickly show you upstairs you have your bed underneath the bed there are these springs and i think 
I actually think this bed up here is more comfortable than the one downstairs. Because it is more of a tent, it is a lot colder up here and the heating doesn't reach up here. But we did sleep up here a couple of nights. We had a quilt and that was plenty to, to stay warm throughout the night. There are also lights up here, which are so helpful during the evenings. So you have one switch here and then another switch on this side and you also have a 12 volt charging point. So another great point about having two beds in this camper for us traveling with Mila was that we could put her to bed and we could still enjoy downstairs. This upstairs does come with a protection net. Having said that, below the um, bed is the passenger seat. So one of us would always sit there just for extra security because obviously Mila's still only so little. But it meant that we could come up here, she could have her sleep bag, she was safe up here, she was asleep and we still had time downstairs. And also up here it has both sides they have little windows which are mesh um, great for extra ventilation and at the front it has the whole front actually comes off so you can just sit up here and really take in the view the vehicle has three batteries it has its main battery at the front and two leisure batteries so everything from the pilot chairs going forward runs off the main battery of the vehicle and everything from the pilot chairs heading backwards to the boot of the vehicle work off the two leisure batteries Behind the passenger seat, you have some hooks and then you have a three pin plug point and then you have two USB points as well. These will only work when you're plugged into the mains. We use these plug points mainly for our laptops, which was great when we were hooked up. And then also our phones and drone batteries and camera batteries, which are great. Underneath the driver's point, there is another three pin plug point which obviously goes off the front battery, the main battery of the vehicle. We found it really handy because we would charge our electric toothbrushes and laptops on the go. And on the outside towards the back of the van, let's get it open, you have your electric point and your fresh water tank where your hose goes to fill up. Okay, in the back is where the gas bottle is kept. You also have these extra shelves for additional storage. And <laughs> the one pain point that we spent 20 to 25 minutes trying to search why our hookup for the electric didn't work. That's the fuse that needs to be switched on when you're hooking up to electric. And underneath this shelf, you have an additional screw on top. This is a security lid that stays on to protect the gas. So if there is any gas leak, there's a small hole underneath this cupboard, which the gas will leak out of, and it won't come into your vehicle. And remember when you set off on your journey, do not forget to disconnect the gas. Safety first, people. Here is where the two, two chairs are. So they are hooked in here. You literally just push this lever down, pull them out, push them back in. The point about the van is that most of the windows have inbuilt blinds, which are really neatly tucked away, and you literally just slide them down, and it's pitch black, really knocks out the sunlight. So that's on all of the main windows and even the boot. The only two that it's not on is the passenger and driver side windows because of rules within the UK, they can't have um, inbuilt blinds. So they do give you these two blinds, which are really easily magnetic and they just clip around. They take two minutes to put on and take off. And then on the windscreen, you just have to move the mirror slightly forward and then you can clip down these two hooks you pull in from one side and from another they have a hole at the bottom on the dashboard and clip into this hole obviously here there is a little bit of a gap and that is the only gap really once you've closed all of the blinds so we just used to hook this down and then you're only left with a tiny little gap. So that is it. That's our tour of our VW California that we had for two weeks through the NC500 in Scotland and the Isle of Skye. It's going to be sad to not have it every day. It did, uh, we did become van lifers for two weeks, novices, yeah. definitely. But it was fun to have and to live in a van and travel. We've learned as we've gone and... The main mm. thing was that Mila had a great time every single yeah. day and that's what it's about and that's yeah. why we wanted to try it out and we do think it's a really great way to travel as a family. I feel like River struggled with it more than I did. Yeah, I did. I think it really tested my patience. Yeah, that's the right way to say it. It really did test my patience. But looking back on it now, just the drive was unreal. Mm. Like, 
and to do it in a van and just to be able to pull over wherever you wanted to not really be on a time clock as as much like 100% like I would definitely do it again and the fact that you've said that you know we now know how to do things like we just needed those two weeks to figure out how to do it and I think that's the thing as well with van life is you can't always be in a rush like mm. things are going to go wrong more often than not and you've just got to take it on the chin and deal with it mm -hmm. so yeah I would I would do it again now I know what I'm in for would you yeah definitely so the question is would you recommend for other fellow travelers especially ones with children to travel in this van yeah on the road yeah I think with the pop-up roof and the space in the back to have two car seats, two ISOFIX car seats, you could definitely use this for a family of four. In hindsight, I think I'd do it again in this van. We know exactly how it works now. So I think we would enjoy it even more. Yeah, or just stay in a hotel. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video, a slightly different kind of video for us, but if you did, give it a thumbs up and make sure that you subscribe because we're going to be dropping videos weekly from now on. And we're interested to know, have you guys already done van life? Are you planning on doing it? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to connect with you and talk about it and maybe you can give us some more advice for future road trips. <laughs> <laughs>